Stefan here, and today we're making Chinese fried dough sticks or you tiao. There's a lot we can learn from making these, starting with the history. The origin of the you tiao is a rather unfortunate story. Set in the Song Dynasty or Song Chao, it tells of a brave military general, Yue Fei, and his unfortunate demise at the hands of a villainous chancellor, Qin Kui. Yue Fei was leading the country's military campaign against the Jurchen-led Jin Dynasty, who in the years prior had destroyed the Liao Dynasty and invaded the Song Dynasty, forcing them to flee to the south. Over the course of many years, Yue Fei led the army to numerous victories, always striving to take back the capital and win the war against the Jin Dynasty. But when he was on the verge of attempting to retake the capital, he was recalled by the emperor's edict, asking him to return immediately. When he received the ludicrous order, Yue Fei's lamentations are said to have mentioned Qin Kui, who had strongly advocated for peace and surrender to the Qin dynasty. After Yue Fei had returned because he had conflicts with Qin Hui over peace negotiations and other matters, Qin Hui eventually framed Yue Fei for rebellion and he was executed under false charges. Similar unfortunate endings seem to befall those who stood against Qin Hui in court, and he grew crueler in his later years. Burning with anger, the people eventually got to frying two pieces of dough twisted together, representing Qin Hui and his wife, who was also said to be quite cruel. They called this fried dough Yu Jia Gui, with the heteronym character Hui being pronounced Gui, which literally means deep fried Gui, so deep frying the minister. In the southern part of China, where they speak Cantonese, the you tiao is called miao jia guai, or oil fried devil. This may have to do with the last character of both names being homophones. Interestingly, in southern Min dialects, in Hokkienese, for example, it's called yu jia gui. The gui here means cake. The name jia gui in Indonesia originated from this. Interesting, right? Mild disclaimer, this story is what I found online, explained from historical classics. If you'd like to know more about this history, make sure to look it up because there's quite a long story behind many of these historical figures. For now, we continue with making the you tiao. It's said that over the years that followed, the shape became simpler, turning into the shape we are now familiar with, two pieces of dough pressed together. Compelling story aside, this way of shaping the dough also makes it puffier during frying, this is because if you fried only one strip of the dough directly, the direct contact of the thin dough with the hot oil would limit its ability to inflate before setting. Whereas if you press two pieces of dough together, the center part would stay relatively more insulated from the heat, giving it a chance to swell and expand. The biggest difference between this you tiao recipe and most other recipes is probably that we're not using baking powder or baking soda, and instead we're just relying on the yeast alone. It's a lot more common to use baking powder or soda, but the flavor of fermentation is something we prefer a lot more, and it's also likely to be better for our health. This study reported that 0.8% yeast fermentation for one hour could reduce acrylamide formed in you tiao by 66.7%. This is mainly due to the yeast's ability to reduce an amino acid called asparagine, which they metabolize during fermentation. Asparagine is quite important because along with reducing sugars, it participates in the Maillard reaction, forming acrylamide at high temperatures. What the paper showed was that during the course of the yeast fermentation, they were capable of reducing the asparagine, and if given enough time, the reducing sugars as well, leading to less acrylamide overall. This alone was enough to convince me to use yeast for the fried dough sticks, and while the you tiao are not as fluffy as they would be if I used baking powder or baking soda, I found that they puff up pretty significantly when made properly and with the right hydration. That being said, if you'd prefer to use baking powder, perhaps because you prefer the taste or want a fluffier result, then make sure to use an aluminum-free baking powder. Many studies have shown the detrimental effects of aluminum on human health, and even though it's a widely accepted ingredient in many baking powders, it's better to be safe rather than sorry and just avoid it. Another big difference in this recipe from many others is that it uses cornstarch. Cornstarch may seem like a bit of an unusual addition, but it's very beneficial in giving us a good you tiao. 
This is because cornstarch, like the name implies, is mainly starch, containing two major types of polysaccharides, amylose and amylopectin. Out of those two, amylose is the one we're most interested in right now, as many studies have shown that a higher amylose content in frying batter generally results in crispier and harder fried foods. Some studies have also reported on its ability to decrease the oil content of the fried food, which is an added benefit. These reasons are part of why we're adding it to this recipe to make our yotiao even crispier. We are also using eggs for the fried dough sticks. Eggs, as we talked about in our video on them, strengthen the gluten and the fat in the yolks also tenderize the resulting product. In a study on the oil absorption and crispness of frying batter, it was found that the protein of albumin found in the egg white was able to reduce oil absorption and improve the crispness of the fried batter. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's jump right into the recipe. We want fried dough sticks full of flavor, so our first step is to make a pre-ferment. In this video, we're using some sourdough starter to make a levain. With all our ingredients assembled, we're going to add 40 grams of sourdough starter into a glass bowl, then 40 grams of water, and finally 40 grams of all-purpose flour. It's a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio, and we're just mixing it all together with our spatula. If you plan to use a poolish instead of sourdough, then you can replace this with 60 grams of water, 60 grams of all-purpose flour, and an eighth of a teaspoon of instant yeast, about 0.6 grams. I won't say that the resulting taste will be as good as if you were using sourdough, but it will be very flavorful and a lot better than if it wasn't fermented at all. When done mixing, we cover the bowl and leave it to ferment for three hours of fermentation at 28 degrees Celsius or until it rises up to over double its height. Then once the pre-ferment is ready, we make the final dough. We've got a glass mixing bowl here and all of our ingredients have been prepared, mise en place, so we go straight to picking up our pre-ferment and adding it into the bowl with a spatula, scraping the entire mixture in. Next are the liquids, starting with 120 grams of water, 30 grams of eggs, pouring it in, tossing in 5 grams of salt after that, brushing it in as well, then a fourth of a teaspoon of instant yeast, following right after. We also have 25 grams of cornstarch, just shaking it in, before we finally add 240 grams of all-purpose flour. Then we want to mix it briefly with a spatula, we're using all-purpose flour with a protein content of around 11 to 12% for this recipe because bread flour can make yotiao a little too tough and chewy for our taste. The eggs and salt added to the dough also play a part in strengthening it, so we're just using a lower protein flour. You can see the big difference between using a low protein flour and a high protein one here. The one made with bread flour is a little less airy and it was also slightly tougher and chewier, a bit more reminiscent of a fried donut rather than a proper yotel. When most of the flour has been tucked into the dough and it's shaggy, we're going to clean off the spatula. And go in with our scraper and our hands to knead the dough. We want to do this for about five to six minutes, pressing the dough forward to really develop the gluten and make sure that all ingredients are homogenous. We could also develop the gluten by slapping the dough down like this. The gluten network is developed whenever you stretch the dough and fold it back, so this step also works. And I find it useful for when the dough's a little too sticky to knead. After about six minutes of developing the gluten, this is what we want the dough to look like. You can see that it's much smoother and the bowl is pretty clean, meaning the gluten is holding everything together. This has not yet reached full gluten development, as in it would pass a window pane test, but it would still easily tear. I'll cover the bowl and let this rest for about 30 minutes at a room temperature of 28 degrees Celsius. When it's been 30 minutes, we take off the cover and we're actually going to give the dough one stretch and fold, giving it a little more strength and also somewhat degassing it. Now, instead of water to prevent sticking, I'm actually using oil here to coat my hands. Adding a bit of oil to our recipe should make our yotiao a little softer and a bit crispier. And I'm simply doing four stretch and folds, one for each side, just pulling the dough up and then folding it back down. Just like that, the dough is super stretchy and easy to deal with, and I'm also dabbing the top with a little more oil.
With the dough nice and strong, I'll cover it and let it ferment for another 30 minutes at a room temperature. Okay, it's time for us to do the final dividing and shaping before we fry our yotiao. So taking a bit more oil to coat our hands and the top of the dough, we'll pat it down. And then with a scraper, we're gonna scoop it out of the bowl, scraping out any bits stuck to the glass. We wanna stretch it out into a long rectangle now. So I'm just pressing it down, making sure it's well lined in oil to prevent sticking, flipping it, and popping any large bubbles, adjusting the sides so that they're straighter with our fingers. We're also using a rolling pin to fully degas the dough and flatten it evenly. We're aiming for the dough's thickness to be about a half of a centimeter and simply rolling it out until it gets there. A lot of yotao sellers use flour for this step to prevent the dough from sticking and make it easier to work with, but we prefer oil because it'll keep the frying oil clear later. We're not making yotao in very large quantities after all. When the dough looks like this, it's a nice thin layer and pretty rectangular, so we're gonna cut it. I've got a straight-sided bench scraper and I'm gonna be cutting the dough starting from one side. As a rough measurement, I'm using two fingers for the width of each piece and then just cutting straight across the dough. This should be very easy as long as the dough isn't over-fermented and you've got enough oil. Then after we've cut the dough vertically, we're also going to split each piece into two horizontally because we're going to be stacking two pieces together, which as I mentioned, will make it look a lot fluffier and is pretty much an old tradition at this point. Alright, and next we just stack them. In case you have difficulties getting the two pieces to stick together, you can dab a little bit of water between them, help them stick better. But since this dough uses yeast, you shouldn't really need to do so. One more thing to do here, now that they're all stacked up, we take a chopstick and press down the center of every two pieces of dough. This works to well and truly seal them together, and we're pressing down quite hard with the chopstick. To prevent sticking, you may also want to line the chopstick with a little bit of oil if needed. We'll just make our way down the line, pushing the chopstick down all the way, leaving no piece behind. Then we're moving all of them onto this wooden board to bring them into the kitchen and get ready for fry. Taking them one at a time, and you can see that the dough is quite extensible, which is great. All right, the pieces of dough are on the board and we're in the kitchen ready to fry them. We're going to fry them at a temperature of around 170 to 180 degrees Celsius for around three to four minutes each. We're using this large and heavy pan, which is going to help us maintain that temperature. And we add the yotiao in one by one, stretching them out just before we drop them in the oil, starting with the uglier scraps of dough we had at the sides. We do it two at a time so as not to overcrowd the pan and lower the temperature by too much. We'll let the yotiao fry unbothered for a bit before flipping them with our wooden chopsticks. You might think that these two yotiaos are pretty small, but just give them a few more moments. They will continue to grow and grow and bam, all of a sudden they get so puffy and large. And they'll sort of start ripping in the middle, which contributes to that fluffiness. We want to fry the yotiao until it's fully inflated, golden brown, and has a very crispy crust, before lifting it from the oil and letting it cool.
We then continue for the rest of the dough. The very last step of stretching the dough out before it enters the oil may not seem too crucial, but it is quite important in ensuring the quality of the yolk tail. This little step is going to make them longer, thinner, and allow them to inflate and actually become crispier. Comparing the yolk tail that hasn't been stretched to the ones that were, you can see for yourself the gigantic difference, so make sure to stretch the dough well. As long as it's properly made, the yolk tail should be like this, and since we didn't use any flour during the shaping process, the oil remains clear and clean, which is another benefit. The two dough pieces being stuck together really contribute to the fluffiness of the yolk tail, and to prove that, you can actually take a look at what happens if the two pieces of dough fuse together due to over-fermentation. It becomes just one very long stick, not very airy, and it kind of resembles a churro. It happened because the dough was left for a little too long, and since this is a yeasted dough, it can get sticky quite quickly. When all the yolk tail has been fried, we're done. These are best eaten on the day they're made. Actually, scratch that. They're best eaten right away. The crunch of a freshly fried yo tiao is such an enjoyable texture, and the taste of that long fermentation simply brings it to the next level. It's so good, I've made several batches of this, and everyone just snatches it right up. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and bye!